This is the story of a father and son buffalo hunt in 2012. This is the Henry Mountains that you can see in the background. On the day before the hunt, we were out scouting, and this is what we ran into, black Angus cattle. This continued to plague us throughout all seven days of the hunt. 30 days before the hunt, we, were, we both received a letter from the Division of Wildlife Resources. We had just won the lottery. We had both drawn a once-in-a-lifetime Henry Mountains buffalo tag. We had two days to respond. We had a lot of things to get together. People, equipment, time off of work, but it all happened. Incredible. On the second page, there's a warning that tells you just how difficult this hunt is. I suggest that you heed to it. You will also be required to take a bison identification course before you receive your license. You have to have a score of 100% to pass on this. This is mandatory and it's a great thing so that you know that you won't be harvesting the wrong sex on this hunt or this species and that's vital to big game management. When you complete this information you will then receive a letter from the BLM which basically states you cannot take your vehicles off-road whatsoever period. Here right now We've spotted some buffalo. The problem is they're 1,900 yards away. Who spotted them? So Jim spotted I'll them. I'll take credit. All right, Jim and Alex, they called us. I stopped you. And we're over here looking now. <laughs> and here's Max looking through the spotting scope. And I might be able to zoom in on these with my hand held. I'll try and zoom in on this. It's really shaky, but you'll see a, buff, a bison in the center of the screen that moves into the trees. Watch carefully. It's a little shaky. Sorry about that, folks. Not very good footage, but um, it's handheld. 1,912 yards. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and get to the ridge that's 1,500 yards away and get a 400-yard shot on them if we can. Here we're on our spot and stop quest. We're in pretty good spirits right now but we've got a long ways to go still. An hour passes. We think we're getting closer. The rangefinder didn't lie to us. It really is a mile, just over a mile to get over there. It sure seems like it's twice, maybe three times that far. The one thing that's certain is these bison are very difficult and hard to get to, and they surely are not by roads. Here we are. We spend the rest of the afternoon. We're 400 yards away from where they were. We spend the rest of the day looking and no bison. Again, here's this letter telling us how difficult this hunt was going to be. And uh, difficult it surely is at this point. Day two produces a huge storm. We spend all day out in the blizzard. Hey Max, what you looking at? Tell the story about what's been going on today. Um, we pretty much got snowed in. On day three, the snow stops, but the wind keeps blowing. This is extremely tough, grinding, glassing, and still no bison. Is that buck? Not quite as big as this one here on the bottom. Okay, we'll take another look at him. Now he's looking at us. Looking on the it's the next one. Here we've spotted some bison. It's the end of day three. The bison are so skittish with their poor vision. They must have heard us coming. They must have heard the four wheelers. Three quarters of a mile away, the bison are running. Hold on, let's do a zoom out on it. We decide to take a hike. We get over in the area and we just okay, boogie in. But before we can get to where the bison are, it's dark. As we hike out in the dark, our water bottle freezes on us in our day packs. Back at camp, it's six below zero. In the middle of the night, we hear something explode. In the morning, we find out what it was. It's a Coke Zero, but nothing can hold up to temperatures below zero. Day four, we spot some bison. They're two miles away under this ridge in the background on that peak. We decide to make a move on these bison. There's three over there. And we know that if we get too close, we're going to spook them. So we decide we've got to hike in. And hike we do. We get about 
a mile away and start our hike in was we approached the bison the bison have decided to bed down and now we have to wait for two hours for these bison to get up we don't want to take any chances so we don't get any closer than we have to so we carefully sneak up on the hill realizing even though the bison can't see us maybe they'll hear us maybe they'll smell us so we lay down and we range the animals and we calculate the shot and do everything we can with our ballistics program to get ready here there's still no shot we're still waiting but the action is about to begin Let her go. Yep, nice. Very nice shot. Very nice. Nicely. Yes. Congratulations! That's awesome. That is an awesome shot. <laughs> you hit her both times. Yep. It sound, what did it sound like, Jim? Thumping of wet carpet. <laughs> Whack! <laughs> Whack! Both, both times. It was great. That's awesome. Yeah, I probably didn't need the second shot, but you never take chances. Nope. Here, the young bull is seen holding his ground. Young bulls try to protect the herds. It's really hard to get them to move away from their cows. But you can surely bet we were relieved when the bull finally left. We didn't turn our backs for long, though. We were always wondering, is he coming back? We were able to get this bison out of here with no problems. Max and I just got something. What was it, Max? It was a buffalo. Yeah, baby. After a 90-minute wait. Yeah. 90 minute to two hours, saith the gym. Wait all day, stocked up, shot it at 300 yards, dropped it. Yep, that thing could take the bullets like nothing else, so boy, I can't believe it didn't just tip it over. Big animal. Wow, can you believe how big this is? It's huge. This is pretty awesome. You know that? We all work together, and it took a team effort to make this work. But you hit, you hit it once, it sounded like a big wet piece of carpet, like Jim would say. Yep. And then you hit it again, and down it went kicking. Yes! Wahoo! <laughs> we are so excited. Couldn't be better, huh? True. Nice. Day four ends in success. You know, we consider ourselves fortunate because we've only seen seven buffalo up to this point. It takes four people two hours to backpack all the pieces of this bison back to the four-wheelers which are parked on the road. This is just to give you an idea of how tough and how hard it is to get a bison out of the mountains. Day five, we spend the whole day grinding and glassing and attempting to get up over this mountain pass that keeps just kicking our rears. We run into the same six foot drifts again. We decide to dig and to push and to try and find a way to get through these mountain passes. It just kicks our rears. We don't see any buffalo, but we get close to the top of the pass. On day six, finally, we grind our way over the pass. We hope maybe today we'll see a bison. 
The bison finally come. My luck's about to change. It's the last day of the hunt. They come from the far horizon and make their way straight towards me. I'm so fortunate. This is footage that was taken by my cameraman, Jim, of him uh, actually following the blood trail up to the bison, walking in. The action happened so fast with these bison. I didn't have time to get the camcorder up and record it. This is where you wish you had a GoPro on your head to get the action. But uh, this is the best I can do, and and I'll be explaining to you what uh, what happens here momentarily. And this is uh, just me getting my tag notched, getting ready to put it on. Okay, uh, this uh, Saturday, this is our last day to be here. This was the last hurrah. We came over uh, in the burn area over Stanton Pass, and I probably hiked about four miles, and finally found some buffalo tracks. The buffalo moving across about three quarters of a mile away coming this way and I thought well maybe they'll take this trail and they came up on this trail and to my right down the, the trail the uh, the bison caught wind of me and they started to run and I ID'd this one and put a good lead on her and shot and I could tell that it hit her and then she went into the group of five and then I didn't know which buffalo it was, and thank goodness it was a good shot. She was bleeding out of her nose, which you can see down the trail here. It was through the lungs. And I could see she was wounded and having a real hard time going, so I put another one in her for safekeeping and she went down. And uh, we gotta try and get her out of here. And that's gonna be another story. <laughs> Two hours later, we have all the pieces back to the machine, just tying her down, getting her ready to go. And uh, this is just to show you, you should get the center of weight or gravity down low. And coming up right here, I'm just getting ready to haul this baby up off the mountain. We're done for the day. It's awesome. And this is just one last look of this beautiful area and the beautiful mountain range that we're on. It's to give you an idea of just how beautiful it is down here, but also how rugged and how hard this hunt was. Bison are not plains animals. In closing, I'd like to thank the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources for maintaining this incredible herd on the Henry Mountains and giving my son and I this incredible once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to go up and hunt these bison. It was truly the hunt of a lifetime and a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And I'd also like to thank uh, my cameraman, Jim, for coming along, filming the hunt, and working his tail off on helping us get this bison out. Thanks for watching. Also, don't forget, you have to do this survey. It's required by law. You won't be able to hunt again until you turn in this harvest permit information. And by the way, it's a great thing to do. They need this information to manage. We were very fortunate in being able to harvest these two bison. There were several hunters on this mountain that hadn't even seen a bison in the week's time that we were there. We were so lucky. We have the lid to a can of Diet Coke that exploded in the middle of the night. We all heard a pop and I felt all this liquid hit my face. So I brushed it all off and looked around and couldn't figure out what it was so I went back to sleep. <laughs> but it apparently was this can of coke. Now we have a mouse to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Amen. So now what's the redneck of the word? Red work. What the hell? Redneck word of the day. It's called dehydrated. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Just had to share some craziness. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking a little break. So yep. As long as we get out of here alive. That's the plan. If yeah, not, it's our mugshot right here. Yeah.